Hi, everyone. This is Yi Xu from Zymo Research Corporation. I'm a postdoctoral research scientist currently focusing on epigenetics R&D. Today in this video, I'd like to briefly present a project of a poster that was accepted to Experimental Biology 2020. This is a project focusing on identifying the epigenetic drivers of an accelerated aging process. Without further delaying, let's get to the details. Aging, the gradual deterioration in functioning with advancing chronological age, has been recognized as a key risk factor for multiple diseases, including cancer, metabolic disorders, and cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases. As previous researchers have shown, in the case of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, the case occurrence rate increases significantly for both women and men as one gets older. And although with a small dip here, the general trends hold true for the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis to happen more easily in older population. Therefore, it is really important for us to investigate the details involved in aging, and hopefully with new insights, we will be able to reduce the risks related to aging in terms of disease onsets. To achieve this goal, we decided to select two strains of mice that would have different lifespans, but also age at different rates. And these two strains of mice are C57BL6J and AKRJ mice. According to previous research results, C57 mice have about 900 days of lifespan for both female and male. But for AKRJ mice, their lifespan is significantly shorter. Both female and male have shorter than 300 days of lifespan. And furthermore, scientists at Zymo use the innovative mouse aging clock based on the DNH test. And we found out that the bigger slope here did validate the fact that AKRJ mice is aging at a higher rate compared to C57 mice. Since the aging clock is based on DNA methylation, it is really natural for us to decide further the investigation from DNA methylation's perspective. And therefore, we decided to use reduced representation by sulfide sequencing, or RRBS, to profile the DNA methylation patterns genome-wide. And hopefully, we can start the elucidation of the potential drivers of the uh, heterogeneous aging rates between these two strains of mice. RBS, this technique itself, is a great option for the first step in a, a genome-wide DNA methylation profiling project. Since it allows global DNA methylation profiling among multiple samples in a both time and cost efficient way, it doesn't require as many sequencing reads as uh, that in WGBS, the whole genome by sulfide sequencing. And also, it covers enough numbers of CPG sites uh, globally. It also has uh, good coverage in functional regions, such as promoters, gene bodies, um, as well as CPG islands, of course. Furthermore, RBS can be applied to almost any species as long as the reference genome exists. And therefore, RBS is a great technique to use in a pilot study, or in this case, as the, to initiate the uh, global pattern elucidation uh, in the heterogeneous aging rate project. The particular meth kit we used is the ZymoSeq RBS library kit, and we have the workflow shown here on the left. After MSP1 digestion, adapters are ligated to these fragmented DNA, and they are bisulfide converted. 
an additional step of PCR adds indexed primers to these bisulfide converted DNA to complete the library structure, which a standard Illumina TrueSeq structure uh, will be there. And so we don't need to use custom sequencing primers. And this also means the sequencing reads will be compatible with any open source bioinformatic tools that have options for RBS. Using the kit, we successfully generated RBS libraries from samples of two brain areas from these two strains of mice, cortex and hippocampus. We started uh, the data analysis by looking at the unique numbers of CPGs detected across all of these samples with a coverage cutoff of five. As shown here, about or more than 2 million unique CPG sites were detected, and there is no significant difference in terms of the number of unique CPG sites detected across all of these samples. However, the mean methylation levels across these four groups of samples showed some difference. As shown in this figure, uh, the cortex samples from C57 strain of mice had a slightly higher average methylation level compared to that from the AKRJ mice. And a similar result was obtained from the hippocampus samples. Uh, the hippocampus samples from the C57 mice has a slightly higher methylation level compared to those from the AKR mice. And this results indicated that perhaps there are some difference in the DNA methylation patterns between these two strains of mice. And so the next step for us was to identify whether such difference really existed. And looking at this uh, hierarchy clustering image, and it clearly shows that the biological replicates from the same brain area of the same strain cluster tightly to each other, while uh, the samples from the same strain but a different brain area were clustered next to uh, the hippocampus samples from the C57 mice. And the samples from the other strain, the AKR mice, were farther from these two groups of samples. And all four groups of samples were clustered clearly uh, from each other. A more straightforward way to visualize the data probably is a heat map. And so here on this heat map, it is more clear that the methylation patterns are indeed different between these two strings. In terms of uh, string comparison, the difference of the methylation patterns are quite distinctive. And there are also subtle difference between the two brain areas of samples, even from the same strain. Now we know that there are indeed differences in the DNA methylation patterns between the brain areas from these two strains of mice. Now we want to localize these differences. And to achieve this goal, we can do the DMC DMR analysis, where DMC stands for differentially methylated cytosines and DMR stands for differentially methylated regions. As shown here on the left of the screen, this is uh, the result of DNC analysis using the cortex samples from these two strains of mice. We identified about 14,000 of DMCs where they met both the difference in methylation values as well as the p-value criteria. A similar analysis can be done to the data from the hippocampus samples of these two strains of mice, and we also achieved about 13.6 thousand of DMCs, where they met both the p-value and a difference in methylation value cutoff. What's worth noticing here is that if we look at these DMCs position, actually these DMCs distributed across almost all the chromosomes in the mouse genome. This indicated that perhaps various genes in many biological processes are playing roles in uh, differentiating 
in terms of aging process and probably more uh, between these two strains of mice. Uh, take a deeper look at these DMCs. We also found that they actually distributed across these five genomic regions. And there are about 2,900 DMCs got annotated to the promoter or exon regions in either uh, in uh, both brain areas, respectively. And these 2,900 DMCs annotated to promoters and exons actually were also enriched in about 200 genes, among which some of them were mentioned in previous aging studies, such as HSPG2 and RNF152, while others are involved in many uh, significant biological processes, as shown here as examples. So for example, PCSK6 is involved in the maintenance of sodium homeostasis and normal blood pressure. This marker 5 is uh, playing roles in chromatin organization, nucleosome positioning and remodeling, as well as DNA repair. While PSAT1 is involved in uh, cellular amino acid biosynthesis processes and metabolism processes. So all of these genes actually are, are crucial in terms of the development of these mice. A similar analysis can be done to the DMRs, the differentially methylated regions. And we found that they actually uh, are annotated to all of these genes involved in the important biological processes. That um, these genes, most of them are also shared in terms of the DMC annotation analysis that we mentioned before. Similar analysis was also done to the hippocampus data. And uh, when we look at the DMR annotation results, we found that there are 86 genes in common between the DMRs found in the cortex sample showing here and the hippocampus data that's not shown. However, there are also a significant number of genes that contain the DMR, that containing the DMRs identified are unique to only one brain area while not to the other. So this really indicated that perhaps such difference in aging uh, process not only can be uh, categorized to the level of strength, but also such difference can be further detailed down to the tissue region level. And this is really inspiring and interesting for us to follow through with more research. Another data analysis that we can do to really identify the participating pathways enriched in these genes that contain DNC and DMRs is pathway analysis. By simply submitting a list of genes that obtained from the DMC DMR annotation to any open source pathway analysis service, we would be able to get a network as illustrated here, as well as the list of the enriched biological pathways. Once again, we can see that those important pathways such as signal transduction, cell proliferation, as well as uh, different tissue development and regulation and DNA packaging are all enriched in uh, uh, are all enriched in these genes that contain the DMCs and DMRs. And these pathways uh, created a great pool of pathways of interest that may contribute to the aging acceleration difference between these two strains of mice. To conclude, uh, what I've presented here showed that DNA methylation profiling using RBS clearly differentiated mouse samples from different brain areas of different strains of mice. And the subsequent DMC DMR analysis successfully identified genes and pathways of interest that could contribute to the accelerated aging in AKR mice. 
And as we've seen, many of these genes and pathways actually are those in metabolism, DNA repair, as well as, as, well as cellular development. In the future, as an epigenetics company, Zymo Research would like to add additional OPICS data, such as chromatome confirmation and transcriptome data to set up a multi-omic data set so that we can further validate the involvement of the related genes and pathways identified here in the aging acceleration difference between these two strains of maps and further investigate with this multi-omic study could probably enable us to be one step closer to the elucidation of the details in the aging process. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. If you have any comments or questions about this video, feel free to leave a reply beneath the video here, and we will come back to check and reply to your questions. Also, please don't forget to subscribe our Zymo Research YouTube channel for the upcoming videos sharing our insights in epigenetics and beyond.